Well, hey everyone, uh, welcome to my review of the Cessna C188. Now, um, this is a new location. Nobody on my channel has ever seen this location. This is actually at my house in the garage. So um, no, my wife has not kicked me out. <laughs> All right, so um, I have gotten enough flights on this airplane, I think, to get a good handle on it um, as far as performance and handling and things that it needs, things that it doesn't. So I'll just go over that right now with you guys. So the first thing I want to go over uh, with this airplane is just a lot of the pros of this airplane. There's a lot of them. Uh, I really like it a lot. Just uh, spoiler alert, I do love this airplane quite a bit. I do love scale airplanes and that's the number one reason why I love this airplane. It's just got lots and lots of scale detail. I love the wing shape. I love the, the struts on the top here. I forget what those are called. Um, there's a perfect space in the inside to put some FPV gear. But even down to the little ribs that are on the uh, the ailerons and the flaps here, uh, just really nice scale uh, details. Not only does it look really scale, but it also looks like the movie airplane from the movie planes, Dusty Crop Hopper. So that's really cool. We had some kids that came by our flying site the other day, and they said they said Dusty, and actually had the uh, the eyeballs uh, on the front windshield here. I need to re uh, draw those a little bit um, more less intense looking. <laughs> Now, when you have the scale detail of this airplane that has the dual dihedral, which means that it basically has a flat section in the center with this upper raised section here on the sides, the dual dihedral really helps to keep the airplane very, very stable, gives it scale performance, and also helps it slow down quite a bit along with the flaps. So this airplane is designed to be a slow speed airplane. It's not for super stole, but it really does slow down nice with the wind. Um, but I was actually impressed that the airplane does not tip stall at those low low speeds uh, so I was really happy with that now guys as far as foam goes um, it, the foam seems to be a very good quality It's very dense and very hard um, it when it does break it does tend to, to break apart and not uh, compress which is really nice and I'll show you guys that right here because I actually did a very silly stupid um, acrobatic maneuver with this airplane, I accidentally forgot that the flaps were full down, so I wasn't able to pull out of a full speed dive, and I broke the entire wing off. Now, you wouldn't be able to tell from this airplane the way it looks right now, but it, the full wing broke fully off. Now, I use um, a, a tacking cement uh, out of the field to glue things back together. I got it glued back together and was off and flying. So, no compression on the nose, uh, no breakage in any other place on the airplane. So the next issue that I came up to uh, that is a pro and a con is the slow 680 kV motor. Now the motor um, is a very low kV. I'm running it on 4S, a 2200 4S. It tends to be a lot slower than I'm used to, uh, but it does have a lot of nice low end grunt because it is such a slow, um, a, a low kV motor. It just took me by surprise because I'm used to my Trojan 1.2 meter um, airplane that's a Warbird, about the same size, but it of course has a higher KV motor. So don't let the 680 KV motor uh, throw you off. It's a little bit slower, but not too bad. Now, when I flew the airplane, um, I thought I was gonna need to use some compensation when I would hit the flaps, uh, either the mid flaps or full flaps, but I actually didn't need any compensation from the elevator whatsoever. I usually add that in on my initial programming, but uh, as soon as I hit, would hit my flaps, the nose would immediately go down because I had the, the elevator program to go down. So I took out all the elevator compensation and I flew, it flies great. It doesn't balloon whatsoever with flaps. Now, if you go onto the RC Group's forum about this airplane, the one constant thing that they talk about is the CG number one and also not enough weight in the nose. So now they recommend a either 3S or 4S for this air, airplane, 2200 but most of the guys that I've seen online are running between a 2600 and 3000 kV motor to take up some of the weight in the nose. That's with the battery pack pushed all the way forward. I found that when I had just a single 2200 4S in there, it was tail heavy and not very fun to fly. Okay guys, so now I've talked about some of the pros, let's talk about some of the cons of this airplane. Now most of the cons with this airplane come from the landing gear and the poor hardware that comes along with the airplane. Fit and finish is actually quite nice. Now this airplane is the only airplane I've started a build video on that I had to stop. I was just so frustrated at every single point of this airplane build, it actually fought me. So um, the wing bolts uh, wouldn't bolt in properly. 
the wing spars, I could have used a little bit more instruction on how to put those in properly, gluing one side and then gluing the other side. Instead, I tried to glue it all, all at one time, so that was a little weird. Um, the wing, excuse me, um, the tail bolts that bolt into the tail, um, I had to enlarge in the holes to let the the screws pass through. And when the screws passed through, there was a large piece of glue in, in the way, and it actually shoved one of the screws off to the side that it wouldn't let it actually seat down into the uh, the plastic. And the plastic holes, I couldn't get the screws to start into the plastic holes, so I actually had to sit there and ream it out a little bit so it could actually get have something to grab onto to get into the plastic there. So lots of things fighting me along the way. Um, other than that, once you get it together and you take care of some of these issues, you're rewarded with a very nice flying airplane. Now, I'm not sure why manufacturers still do this, but um, the servos in the wings, let me flip this around. The servos in the wings are completely mirrored and that, for you experienced flyers, will know that poses a big, big problem. So when you have mirrored servos, you can have a Y lead connecting your, your um, ailerons and they can operate the correct direction and then you get to your, your um, flap servos and you instead of both of the flaps going down at once, once they're wide together, of course you have one that goes up, one that goes down. So I actually had to take my flap servo out, it was actually um, this one here, and flipped it from one side to the other so that instead of it being a mirror image, it is a duplicate image of uh, what the, the servo side should look like. So now my, aileron, my flaps go down at the same time. Weirdly, um, the aileron servos are mirrored but they actually would go down equally at the same time so i actually had to take run a servo reverser on one of the aileron servos as as, as well so that's kind of a weird thing kind of this weird step that you have to get past to actually fly this airplane now i know there's a lot of different ways around that this is the way i chose you could actually run uh instead of running the airplane with y cables you could run um, more channels on your airplane, having one channel per each aileron and one channel per each flap. That's another way of getting around it. Which brings me to the landing gear and the wheels. Now I've replaced these wheels with some better ones uh, and I'll tell you the reason why in just a moment. The landing gear is very, very flexy and therefore makes it very easy to bend because it is like this, this um, I don't know if it's steel or aluminum or whatever this is, but the wheel, wheels will tend to twist a little bit and they'll also tend to get pushed backwards and bend backwards in case you happen to have a hard landing. One of the ways of combating that is to make the length of the uh, arm here a little bit less long. And I got this from Andrew Newton. I'll put a link to his channel down below and his video. I shortened each end. Um, I measured from the, the hole that was previously there, measured an inch up, made a, um, a hole in the side of the landing gear, drilled a hole, and then bent a new uh, compensation bend so that, that our wheels would be um, rolling um, perpendicular to the to the ground. That and also I ran a piece of wood uh, underneath this edge of the landing gear to help tilt the landing gear forward just slightly, uh, which helps the airplane not nose over. This airplane has a tendency, if you're landing on grass or if you hit anything with the wheels, it tends to tip over because there's so much weight on the nose. And you can see here I've done that a few times with the nose cone there. So. Angling the landing gear forward definitely helps the situation. So if this wasn't angled forward, it would be straight up and down right about here. Now the stock wheels that it came with are very, very thin and the stock wheels were very, very poorly made and poorly bolted into the, uh, the landing gear system. It came with, I think, M3 bolts and uh, the center hub of the plastic of the wheel would start getting dug away by the bolt that was in here. So not only were they really wobbly, it would just um, rub away so much and also the, would, it would turn the bolts in the inside and stop the landing gear. So I'd come in for landings and the landing gear would just stop and the thing that my plane would just nose over. So I'm not sure where I got these wheels from. I might have just had them in my stock, but these are 2.75 um, inch wheels. Um, and the hardware, I believe, is M4 instead, so it's a much sturdier axle, so you guys will see that there. Really, really nicely made wheels. I always oil my wheels as well because I can't stand squeaky wheels at the field. Any, anytime I see a new Wendy that has plastic wheels that are squeaking, I'm like, put the oil on those wheels. <laughs> 
Um, so those modifications made a lot of difference. So running more weight in the nose um, and tilting those um, the landing gear forward and changing the wheels out really made this model uh, fly great. And then I added a stabilizer. So I love the way this thing flies um, without the stabilizer. It's fine. Um, it has a couple of characteristics, like let's say when I'm coming into the to a, for a landing, sometimes uh, the airplane would would kind of do this thing where you give it a little bit of input, 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 and then it goes way up, and it goes, and then you have to put it back down and up and down like that. I don't like messing with those issues, so I suppose I could add more weight to the nose and tune in my elevator throws uh, a little bit more, but I just tossed in one of the Lemon RX stabilizers. And it just kind of solved all that problem for me. So there's another issue I'm going to go over with in just a second that I'll tell you about, which is also handy with the um, stabilizer. The stabilizer really, really helps um, uh, with the crosswind and landings as well. Now, as far as ground handling performance of this airplane, the ground handling is very, very good. Every once in a while when you have those crosswind landings, when you come in for a landing, it'll tend to weather vane and scooch around like a lot of tail draggers do. With the stabilizer, it definitely helps um, make those incidences a lot less. Okay, and coming to the Lelman RX again, which is a uh, just a gyro uh, stabilizer. It doesn't self-level or anything like that. The other issue that came to mind uh, when um, I was flying this without the stabilizer is that when you would go to full throttle, so anything from about half throttle up, this airplane tends to nose up just like this. So. Um, I could have gone in and added uh, washers to the top screw mounts of the motor mount and angled the motor down a little bit. I could have done that, but I just don't have time. <laughs> Once I flew it with the Lemon RX and it just flies wonderfully, and it's kind of a slow speed airplane anyway, uh, it really did help that situation with the, the um, full throttle and, um, and it nosing up quite a bit, which might actually um, you know, feed into the reason why when I was coming in for landings, I'd get a little bit of throttle and it would kind of do this, so maybe the elevator wasn't always a problem there. But to my surprise, the elevator is actually a real thin piece at the end and the, and the, the rudder as well. They actually have quite a bit of authority, I think because this has an interesting pivot point at the CG. Now, uh, speaking about CG guys, I'll just mention real quickly, um, the book set or the manual says 100 millimeters. That is from this, um, this point right here, this point that's kind of more forward. So that puts your CG right about right here. I've got a tiny little mark there. You probably can't see it on, on camera, but from the leading edge, this main edge here, it's 65 millimeters. So either way you measured it, it's like 100 millimeters from here or 65 millimeters from here. Anyway, guys, um, I don't know what it is about this airplane, but everybody loves it. It puts a smile on everyone's face. It definitely does for me. Um, I'm really excited about it. I got it from um, Grayson Hobbies down in Florida. I am going to put a link in the, the description that does help out my channel. Um, it's my Amazon store. So if you guys ever like the things that I promote on my channel, it'll be in my Amazon store. And anytime you use those links, it does help out my channel to help produce more content just like this. So let me know if you like this video, guys, and I will talk to you guys on the next one. Bye.